Right, this is Amma. He's attempting to get task three for psychology for sports performance. He's going to identify, explain, and analyze the group dynamics and how they affect sports performance. So then, um, Mr. Ayub, all right, Sky Sports News here, Andy Goodgen. So, Chelsea performing unbelievably badly this season, all right. So, why? What are the reasons why? Uh, well, I've got um, four reasons which are the Ringelman effect. Social loafing, Tuckman theory, and team cohesion. Uh, first of all, I'm going to start off with the um, Ringelman effect, and uh, that's because um, the performance of my players are decreasing because they're relying on other players to perform. An example of that is um, one of my players, Pedro. He wasn't performing to his full ability because he thought because Eden Hazard was playing against Bournemouth, and he thought. He, he passed the responsibility onto Eden Hazard to do well for the team, so um, he didn't put his full effort in to um, help the team out. Okay, yeah. Uh, my next one is uh, social loafing. That is when um, my players are backing down from, um, from the uh, f uh, challenges, performances due to lack of motivation. Um, an example of this was when we faced Les Leicester last week. Um, uh, my main penalty taker, Eden Hazard, he backed down to take a penalty when the match was at nil nil. So um, Oscar had to take the responsibility and he missed the penalty, and then that had a big effect on the game because we ended up losing the game. Yeah. Um, how, how else can we say social loafing in a game, and what else can we say to see lack of motivation? Um, well, um, I've, se I've seen it in my, my own team's performance when my defenders are backing out of challenges. They they don't they they not they they're not motivated enough to go into a challenge, put their body on the line, which then is costing us to concede goals, and that's why we're losing matches. Um, the next one is a uh, Tuckman theory. There are, there are four stages to it: um, forming, storming, norming, and forming. But I feel at the moment my team's are storming. Uh, there's a lot of tension, a lot of fallout between the players. They're not, um, they're not integrating well. They're not uh, uh, working well effectively. What I need to do to get my team onto the norming stage is replacing that conflict and um, replacing it with uh, solidarity. Um, I need to remind my players of their team roles. Um, uh, and not not to fight over authority or just to work well and uh, for the team and then from there we can move on to performing where um, my team will be playing well they'll be uh, play well as a team everyone gets along with each other and from there we'll get the right results to move forward um, the last uh, one is uh, team cohesion um, it's early in the season and there's uh, not much team cohesion at the moment. Um, that's because of players falling out with their, with each other, with um, with our physio Eva Canero. She she uh, created a lot of tension in the dressing room, which then um, de uh, decreased the team cohesion levels. And what I need to do to help or uh, increase the team cohesion is to um, take the team out take the team out, um, maybe take them for uh, some tasks to get them to work well together and then hopefully we can take that onto the pitch, work well together and then we'll get the results. Alright, so what is the difference between like task cohesion and social cohesion then? Um, task cohesion is um, when I have to get my team to work well towards the task. For example, um, the task could be to win a game. Um, I need to um, get get the methods right, get the get the right um, tactics into the team, so they could help uh, achieve that task. Whereas well, so social cohesion is more um, like in a social environment, going out, doing uh, activities, and uh, getting my team to. Get, get along with each other in a social situation so they all uh, get on with each other and we can take them to the pitch. 
All right, was that four you've gone through? Uh, yeah, yeah. Right, so um, which one of those four different factors then has the biggest effect on the team then? Um, well, I would say um, Ringerman effect that has a big um, effect on our performance because I want all of my players to take responsibility, all of them to work equally, all 11 players on the pitch to work well as a team, not one thinking that I'm going to rely on someone else to perform well. I want all of my players to perform well in each of their positions, work well as a team, and then from there um, we will start winning because um, at the moment my players are relying on other players to do well, the better players. Yeah, so, so how are you going to, so you said Pedro, so how, how are you going to help Pedro become like more like motivated and not to rely on Hazard? Yeah. Yeah, how are you going to do that? Well, basically... Pedro's come from a big team, Barcelona. Coming into English Premier League is not easy for him. I, I just need to uh, remind him of his, of his ability uh, to get him uh, to start playing comfortable again and believe in his own ability. So then he won't need to rely on other players to do well. He could believe in his, his own ability and that could have a good impact on the games and the results. All right, yeah. So, so the ring of effect has the biggest impact. Which do you think is the easiest to overcome as a manager? Um, well, I would say um, <clears throat> uh, a part of the Tuckman theory, um, moving on from storming to norming, <clears throat> getting that solidarity back together, I believe that I've got a good group of players and um, they're, they're good lads. I believe that if, if I could um, get them um, to work well with each other, to get along with each other, because um, there's a few new players coming in, uh, to get them to work well with each other, we could um, become a solid unit. And I believe I could do that easily compared to the other four stages. Yeah, so, so how could you get them to understand their own roles then? Um, looking at... Um, <clears throat> could be looking at uh, previous games where we, we haven't been performing so well. Um, looking at the mistakes, easy mistakes that they shouldn't be making. Yeah, yeah. video analysis would be a good way of doing yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, video analysis, uh, looking at uh, starts, how much effort they're putting into the game, uh, the uh, distance that they're covering, uh, to make sure that everyone's working well in their own positions. All right, good. Right, so, so finally, so results last night, you got knocked out of the Champions League, so are, are you going to get sacked in the morning? We've heard a few rumours in the press conference here. Uh, I hope not. Um, I, I've had a word with my owner and yeah, he's uh, reassured me that I'm, I'm, I'm safe. <laughs> yeah, we've just seen Jose around the corner, he's coming back apparently. <laughs> no, no, I don't think he is, um, especially what happened earlier on in the season. I don't, I don't think that's happening. <laughs>